Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Tahoma 2D tutorial. Please feel free to pause the video as needed in order to follow along and be sure to ask any questions you may have in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and let's get started. Thanks for watching my day's videos. Please subscribe and click the notification bell. Okay, so let's jump in. We're going to start with the brush tool. Um, I'm a big fan of shortcuts. You can access the brush tool by clicking it here in the toolbar or by hitting B on the keyboard. B as in boy. There are several features I'd like to discuss about the brush tool before we actually start drawing with it. One feature that I absolutely love is the snapping feature. If you don't have the snap on, then what will happen is you can't really close an object. It won't snap close. I mean, you can close it, but it won't snap for you. If you turn snap on, you can go low, medium, or high. I usually use like medium, but it will auto kind of close the shape. As you can see that little circle right there. So it'll sort of catch it and close it for you. It'll also allow you to snap to the sides of objects on the same level. So you can do things like this. So you don't have to overdraw, right? Um, so you can actually snap in and you can, you know, see what happens that didn't snap. And you can see the snapping icon. It's that little circle, right? There. You'll see it kind of grab. See how it grabs onto the edge there? So I do recommend snapping. Second feature I recommend is smoothing. Now, before we get into that, I do use a mouse to draw. I don't use a drawing tablet, all right? So... What I would suggest is with this smoothing feature here, it will smooth out your lines for you and it'll make things nice and smooth. If the smoothing is not on, you get this sort of a jagged appearance. I usually let that run around 25. It creates a nice smooth line for me. Um, those are two features that I use. Okay. The auto close, auto fill, auto gap are great or auto close auto group auto fill sorry are great if you want to create a closed filled shape this is a really really nice feature if that's what you're looking to do this will also work with new colors that you make so you can do things like this all right um and these are vector shapes so if you select one of these you'll see that it does have vector points it does have handles you can add points by hitting holding down control and clicking on the line you can add new points you can extend the handles you can rotate the handles. If you hold Alt, you can rotate the angles or the handles at an angle like this, right? So instead of a full rotation, you can do things like this. So that is the brush tool in a nutshell. Uh, I use it quite a bit. It allows me to create some really dynamic shapes. I don't use auto close, auto group, and auto fill that much. And I will explain why. One of the things I like to do with the brush tool. Let's say I want to make a quick character. I'll go like this. Let's make a little character real fast. We'll give him some ears. We'll give him some eyes. We'll give him a little mouth. And we'll give him, you know, just hair. We're, we're going really quick here. All right, a little body. Now, the reason I don't use the auto group auto close is these are still considered what are open shapes. Meaning, if I start filling these with colors, so let's say this was our skin tone and we wanted the hair to be red and we wanted to make a color for the shoe or the clothes to be blue, right? If we grab the brush and we make a darker blue of the shirt, and let's say we shade, we draw like this. Let's say we draw over the line like this. If the shapes are still open, you can fill that and you can take the stroke and make it a zero. Well, the zero stroke does not render. So if you turn this on, you see that stroke goes away, but it's still there. This is a quick way to shade vector shapes. We could also do this with the face. So let's say we took a darker fill there and we went, eh, we'll go under the mouth. Let's say we went here, right? And we bring that stroke down, there you go. It's a really quick way to sort of shade in those objects that I've found. And then what I would normally do is take this entire thing, group it with control G, and now this whole thing is one giant shape with the shades in it, right? If we do a close shape, well, let's start that again. We'll do auto group, and then we fill it, and then we want to come back, and we want to give it a shade. If we go like this, whoop, hold on, it doesn't work because it's no longer considered an open object. It's a closed shape, so the fill fills the whole shape. So again, 
If you want to be able to shade with this technique, you have to leave auto group, auto close, auto fill off, create your objects, fill your objects, and then take those darker colors and shade just like that. I hope that makes sense. If there's any questions about that, just uh, feel free to ask me in the comments. Uh, it, I can explain a little further, but um, it's a really good way to shade. Let's go over the second tool that I used. It's actually under the geometry tools, and you can get there by hitting G. Now, up here, you have rectangles, circles, ellipse, ellipse line. All these are pretty self-explanatory. The one I like to use is the polyline. This is the closest I've found to what would be a pen tool. So if we grab the stroke and we start drawing, you can see that you can create standard looking vector shapes, right? Which then if we hit C, we can modify the points, we can add points, we can bend vertices, right? So this is a vector shape. One thing I like to do with this tool is you can create standard vector artwork. So what I would normally do in like Affinity if I wanted to create like a little monster character, we do something like this, right? Then this is where I would use the brush to sort of complement the polyline tool. If so, let's say I wanted to give this thing eyes, okay? And then let's say I wanted to go back to the geometry tool to give it a mouth. Let's say we wanted a mouth like this for whatever reason. All right, you see how that created that shape. And then we could go here for the horns, you see? So the geometry tool works much like a pen tool in what would be like a vector program. You can bend lines. You can create a weird vector sort of shapes like this. Now, one cool thing I want to show you with this tool, if we hit G, one thing I found is let's say you're drawing like this and you have a bend. And instead of this curving out right there, you wanted a straight line here. If you hold down control and you click on the circle, it doesn't actually cut it. What it does is it makes a new point, but you can't really see it. So if you hit control, then you, you get that, you get that angle like that, right? So we'll do that again. And this is how I'm able to create some of my, my complex vector shapes is by utilizing these tool sets, right? And then of course this would feel like a regular vector shape. Of course you can do the shading like a regular vector, like we just showed a minute ago. Okay. Well, that's a closed shape, so we can't, but I had it on closed. But, uh, yeah. So these are the ways in which I use the vector tool to create my vector artwork in Tahoma. Um, the geometry tool by hitting the G and going to polyline, and then, of course, the brush. My plan here is I'm going to release some videos where we actually draw out um, real pictures using those tools. So if you guys have any requests, if you want to see like landscapes, if you want to see monsters, if you want to see characters, whatever you would like to see drawn with vector art, let me know in the comments below. And what I'll do is I'm going to do some like let's draw with Tahoma 2D or let's make vector art with Tahoma 2D. And we'll kind of deep dive into this and we'll actually create some drawings live and and we'll, we'll discuss some of these options. So, yeah, I think that's a good place to end this. Thanks for checking it out and have a great day. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and click the notification bell. If you have something you would like to see me draw, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you would like to support the creation of these videos and earn other rewards, please check the description for my Patreon information. Always remember that anyone can be creative. Just believe in yourself and work hard. Thank you, and have an amazing day.